Last video, we tested out our revived ancient wind vane for the very first time by making an impromptu trip to the island of Cozumel. We didn't even end up using our motor to sail there. On our last attempt, we bailed on the trip completely because the engine was overheating. But we would need the engine eventually. More about that later. In the daylight, we woke up to these guys in our front yard. Cozumel is Mexico's largest cruise ship destination. Slowly backing in. I don't want an incident. With around 3 million travelers arriving by that method annually. The ships carry 3, 4, 5, sometimes 6,000 passengers. The island is not at all well set up for sailboat cruisers though. It can be hard to find a spot to anchor that gives easy and secure access to the shore. This rocky landing can be done in calm kind of weather, which luckily we had. We checked on the conditions right under the boat. The island is well known as a scuba diving destination, and even here at this ordinary little launch point for departing dive boats, not protected by the island's national park boundaries, there was some life to discover. We paid the owners of the closest pier 100 pesos to leave our dinghy for the day, although a shore landing was also possible if you're willing to risk some spiky rocks. We climbed the public beach access steps up to the busy road in search of a bag of ice. But we found an affordable fun activity for the day instead. Get the axle. Okay. Dale, dale. Six hundred pesos for twenty-four hours. For the scooter. Yeah, we have it till tomorrow, twelve o'clock. The island boasts a super flat, basically sixty-five kilometer cycle track. It circles much of the perimeter of the island. I would love to do some running along this beautiful coastline someday, but for now, with the dog along for the ride, we were going to do the whole loop in one go. There are a couple of restaurants out on the far side, where you lose phone connectivity and you feel as though you're really out on the other side of some great green expanse.
We stopped at an abandoned surf shack that looked as though it may have shut down after a hurricane. There's some shade, but it looks like I can fall through the floor. This thing looks like it can crumble. Robbie's walking the dog through here. At least it's shady. gonna walk under those. It, it all tipped over downwards. We arrived at downtown San Miguel de Cozumel, where tourists can find a wide variety of drugstores and diamond shops. We're at the grocery store now. Nice part about getting the scooter is that we could do a grocery run and a water drink run, an ice run. It's been raining a lot here. I think we probably are getting more wet here than up at Isla Mujeres because a lot of the clouds seem to just be forming right over Cozumel. We were really lucky for our scooter day. It just cleared up for us. We were able to make our way all the way down and up the island. The whole tour, the whole circle with the big green rainforest center of the island. The coasts here are just spectacular. I don't imagine it would hinder too many people's plans coming to Cozumel. The main attraction here is diving whether that be the interior of the island, the cenotes, the cave system, diving, or on the outside of the island, the reef system, all done in the water. So it's not like it, it hinders too many people's plans here. Maybe the cruise ship people arriving aren't too happy. Without any wind to help us along south, we moved the boat north to the downtown Anchorage. But that almost ended up being a disaster to anchor there. We arrived and I quickly jumped in to inspect the situation, and it didn't look good. A long scratch mark on the ground where the anchor tried to dig in, where it hit solid rock as far as the eye could see. We moved closer to the grocery store that we were trying to paddle to and found some sand below us at about six meters of depth. We felt comforted later after going for a walk with the dog. The wind blew from all directions that evening, making the anchorage a relatively sloshy mess. So we were pretty ready to depart the next morning. The journey began to Puerto Aventuras. Viewers of our previous videos will know that we had our boat docked in that canal for several years. Now we were returning to pick up some parcels being held there for us and to grab some dead batteries that we could use to purchase an extra battery for our house bank. Another day without a puff of wind, so we used the engine the entire way to cross from the island to the mainland. And guess what? It didn't overheat. We arrived at the drop-off and celebrated our major win. Eventually some breeze filled the sails, and we motor sailed against the 1.5 knots of current all the way down to Puerto. Robbie pulled in a line full of bonito.
and then a fishing reel with a beautiful Sierra mackerel. We ate ceviche and freshly squeezed watermelon on ice. The entrance into Puerto Aventuras can be a dangerous one in windy conditions, but it was wonderfully calm as we arrived in the early afternoon. Friends had made some very temporary space for us to stay there just one night in the harbor which is now jam-packed full with charter boats. To make sure the chopper doesn't jump on the side of the wall. Yeah, on the wrong side. Well, first I'm gonna... Okay, I'm gonna put the engine neutral. Will that straight? And then we were off the next day with our items that we came to pick up. Our first time ever leaving this harbor under our own power. We were anticipating an easterly wind and a beam reach back up north to Isla Mujeres. First things first, fishing lines in the water. should be turning more southerly today, but here we are doing an upwind sail. Luckily, uh, in Esperado, she likes doing this, but we are heading straight into it. We try to go on a forecast that is good for us to sail up to Isla Mujeres, but it's, <laughs> it's an upwind slog today, not surprisingly. We were able to sail again the whole way though, no problem. Wind vane is working well. Yep. Shut up. I should shut the f up. <laughs> touch my nuts, touch wood, touch the snooze. Only turning on the engine momentarily to point more into the wind here and pass directly behind the car ferry. Another tangle. What's going on around here? A yellowtail snapper, which he could have waited half an hour before cutting as it was very delicate, our loyal hound by his side the entire time. The rest of our day filled with freshly brewed iced tea and freshly squeezed limonade. Looks like a bonito, right?
as soon as Robbie went down to cook, it got real nice and sporty outside. Trouble, get your snoot out of my food. A medley, a fish medley soup. From that point on, we just went faster and faster. The wind vane, just like the very first day that we had tested her, was guiding us along our way. We were almost back to the Isle of Women. We were now traveling 8.59 knots as the sun began to disappear. And Robbie sliced up the remaining fish that he had caught. <laughs> 